Hello, Harion. Thank you very much for joining me today on this uh, hopefully valuable talk and class on uh, naturally uh, balancing your weight uh, based on Ayurvedic principles. So, um, first, I just want to say that you know we often look at uh, weight as a disease, and now I think it has been classified as a disease, but it's not really a disease in a sense, it's a symptom, it's, a, it's a, uh, an effect, not necessarily the cause. Of course, weight in itself can be the causes for many other health complications. So it's a, you know, we can see it as a, a metabolic disorder that's uh, resulting in weight gain, but mostly it's a symptom. So that's why it's uh, very important to... Uh, understand the cause of your weight gain, which I've emphasized in other um, uh, webinars. And by the way, for those of you who have just joined, uh, welcome. And uh, please uh, send your messages and, and questions, and I'll glance over during the presentation and try to uh, address your questions as much as possible. So what I want to do here first is, since we're going to base this on Ayurveda, this is based on Ayurvedic principles, which we're going to teach you here, which is, I think, a very individualized approach to weight gain. We want to uh, first, before I give recommendations, we first want to make sure each of you is clear about your Ayurvedic body type because they're very distinct in Ayurveda, these three types of, of uh, dominant properties or body type, vata, pitta, kapha. So uh, I'd have you raise your hand and say, who, who doesn't know the body type? So, I mean, if you don't know, I, I'm going to give you a quick little introduction, but it would be good to identify your own body type first. It's like kind of knowing the make and model of your own car before you begin to repair it. So, and, and three, the three different types, just very quickly, the Vata generally in an early part of her life or his life is thin, dry, and a cold person. It doesn't put on weight very easily, but they can put on weight. And this type, if you were born thin most of your life, maybe through before children and child childbirth and other traumas or difficulties in your life you 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 put on weight so this could be too for this type of person is very sensitive has poor sleep so it could be to the anxiety poor sleeping problems and even blockages and congestion in the system including constipation that led to your weight gain so if you were thin person who tended to be cold not warm and tend to have dry skin constipated dry stools easy to have be nervous and anxious, but now you've gained uh, excess weight, not just a little extra on your thighs. Um, and extra weight around the thighs or, or the hips uh, can be due to the chronic constipation for many years. And of course, just having one bowel movement a day is really enough, and that's kind of a mild form of constipation. So uh, that's addressed in other uh, uh, videos that I provide. So you'd want to overcome that constipation. And of course, if anxiety is a factor creating stress, which uh, affects your, adversely affects your digestive system, uh, then you want to address that. And of course, stress and anxiety can make you nervous and want to have comfort foods like grains and overeat and snack due to this uh, emotional factor. So if you are a sensitive person and you've eaten a lot because of emotional reasons, because of nervousness or stress, then you, and you then it could be your cause could be uh, focus well, your your treatment needs to be focused on this relaxing improving digestion lowering stress in your life and that would be for this vata type if you are not that thin and not cold uh, if you're a little more muscular and you were warm and you had a strong appetite in life then you could have been born a pit the person so even though you may have put on excess weight now maybe due to lack of exercise. Maybe when you were young, you were athletic and swimming and surfing and doing a lot of things, and, and now uh, you're, you're more sedentary, as many of us are, then uh, you put on extra uh, weight. And maybe your appetite is very strong. So this type of pitta person, because of their strong appetite alone, can create a weight gain because there's too much we call pitta or uh, panchaka pitta, which is part of the jatra agni, the part of the digestive fire that we have. And when this is too high, then we're hungry and we need to eat to kind of pacify the fire. Um, and this, you know, creates weight gain because then we're overeating. So the first type, the vata, is maybe overeating because of nervousness or anxiety, and the, the pitta could be overeating due to this strong 
uh, digestive fire acid or too much hydrochloric acids and 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 this creates overeating so you want to cool the appetite down and you know take away the hot spicy foods the chili and the cayenne and cool that appetite down and that will be going in the right direction but you can see how both are types of emotional eating in a way uh, one is you know hot and irritable and it has to eat the other one is anxious and has to eat so um, that's a big difference in the treatment. And the third type is a kapha type, and the kapha type tends to be more slow, have a slower metabolism, easy to gain weight, generally has a, a more full, shapely figure, even in the youth, and gains weight very easily. And I would assume most people who um, have a chronic weight gain or, uh, throughout their lives are in this kapha type, or maybe you are a subtype, or like a kapha pitta, pitta kapha, or the kapha but there's this kapha element that is uh, has a slower metabolism easier to gain weight and of course the kapha's qualities are slow and heavy and, and dense and uh, so if you become too kapha or you have too much weight or you're kapha prakriti original body type then you tend to be more slow and heavy and it contributes to a slower metabolism that ultimately leads to more weight gain and of course this type of kapha person can have emotional eating issues as well as far as feeling depressed or sad or lonely and eat comfort foods and grains and not want to get up and exercise and move and this is contributing to weight gain so this type of difference in the body types vatapitta kapha should really be the first thing that you identify and of course as a uh, practitioner you know meeting patients on a daily basis uh, many of which have health issues this is the first uh, aspect that we want to I want to understand or do we have a vata person who is thin dry and cold and maybe eating out of anxiety or do we have a pitta person who's hot warm and hungry and maybe eating out of you know irritability and strong appetite or do we have a kapha person who's you know more slow and sluggish and maybe slightly lazy to go exercise and maybe uh, emotionally a little bit sad and lonely and eating out of that uh, emotion so this is the first category you want to really identify because you you want to know what is the cause without the cause it's very hard to create the treatment that's why I've said in all my videos, it's very risky to just follow advice online, including the advice I give you, unless you know that it's suitable for you and your particular type. So you really have to have that understanding of yourself, of your original make and model of body type that you have. Because the Vata type of person, you know, they're going to have uh, uh, gas and bloating quite easy with, say, cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and kale. So it's not going to be good for their body even though um, this cabbage family uh, cabbage broccoli brussels sprouts and kale is probably one of the best weight loss uh, categories of food and generally it's recommended but not if you're getting this uh, gas and bloating and constipation from it so there's always an exception to rules you can't really say you should eat this for weight loss we can give you some guidelines and those guidelines for vegetables would include this cabbage family but not if you're uh, a vata type and it's uh, disturbing your digestive system because a digestive system must be more more important than anything else and the pitta type was a strong appetite is acidic and hot and burning maybe some acid reflux they can't do chili peppers and cayenne too hot even too much ginger but in fact uh, hot foods chili peppers and cayenne are actually very good for weight loss uh, but not for that person but if you're a kapha type and you're always put on weight easy a little slow and sluggish and heavy and had a full body even into youth and you know then uh, the best diet for you is going to be spicy foods and hot foods to stimulate you and because the spicy is hot and sharp and burning and helps to metabolize fat and uh and then more cabbage broccoli brussels sprouts and kale um to because these are very good for uh, weight loss so that's just giving you one example of the the differences in the diet uh, we were just talking about only vegetables we could do that for fruits grains and um, uh, other uh, foods um, drinks as well um, based on your body type so even though you may have been uh, uh, you may have been thin maybe when you were young and now you put on overweight you can't radically change your diet because you'll adversely affect your your digestion so it's not a good idea um, to um, um uh, to to uh, you know radically change to a weight loss diet that may not be suitable for you just because it's helping other people to uh, lose weight so 
Um, that's the first thing you want to come to uh, understand is this body type. The next, let's look at the uh, different qualities that uh, lead to uh, weight gain that we could apply to most people. Of course, when you have excess weight, you have the heavy quality, heavy quality. You're gross. It's, it's feeling heavy. So you don't want to eat heavy foods. What are heavy foods? Nuts, cheese, meat, and wheat. You know, and Ayurveda was many thousands of years ago, so they didn't understand about gluten. And, you know, I think that's just a scientific uh, view of this protein, of this aspect, we should say, of wheat. And it is hard to digest the protein now, they know. And it's heavy, and it, it puts on weight. So if you're a thin, skinny, underweight person, and you maybe just have a little extra weight on your uh, your left thigh or something, you know, don't go gluten-free on your, you could deplete the rest of your, your body. You want to just maybe find some moderation there and, and and work on maybe your eating habits or eating at night and not el even eliminate wheat. It may be very good for many people who are underweight to to have wheat. So it's not good to really tell everybody don't have wheat. But and, and then also barley is apparently has a little bit of gluten in it, but it's, it works very good for weight loss. So the whole concept of gluten free is eating gluten free is kind of flawed. It's kind of uh, not looking right. for barley in particular. It's kind of like throwing the baby out with the bathwater because barley is much lighter, easier to digest and very effective for weight loss. And it does have a little bit of gluten in it. Of course, if you're a celiac and you have a true allergic reaction, even to trace amounts of gluten, that would be another situation. So um, no heavy foods. You want to write that down. No heavy foods. Uh, and so that's, you know, nuts. Nuts are heavy, cheese are heavy, wheat, meat is heavy, and uh, even chicken is, is heavy, fish is heavy. Uh, what, so, so we want to eat light because we've become heavy. You know, this is ancient uh, 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 wisdom here that's been around uh, thousands of years ago uh, and way before nutrition. And uh, it's very practical, very effective, and very simple, really. Uh, so eating lighter foods instead of m meat and cheese and they use as your protein source and you have legumes. Legumes are light and they have an astringent quality, which tightens things up, which is exactly what you want. And they're high in fiber, keep the colon clean. So, you know, just changing from going somewhat vegetarian to uh, uh, eliminating most of the meat and, and uh, other animal proteins and doing legumes is a big step in a, a right direction for most people, but not all people. Um, and then... Um, and then uh, not salty, you know, salty is going to help you retain water. And uh, particularly if you have edema or swelling, you would want to be on a, a low salt diet. In all cases, you want to be taking a Himalayan salt or uh, natural sea salt, not ionized salt. This is not uh, healthy for the body, even in small amounts. This is one reason why restaurant food is very poor. It's because they're using low-grade salt and also um, low-grade fat. And there's a lot of trans fats and uh, 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 ionized salt in processed foods. Besides being processed, they're hard to digest. Like people, pasta is hard to digest. It doesn't matter if it's made out of rice or buckwheat. It's still harder to digest than, say, light grains like millet, quinoa, and uh, buckwheat, which are more dry and more stringent and lighter. Um, and then, of course, uh, no sweets because, you know, sweet is creating the energy that allows your body to run if you're tired and weak and you have a little date or banana you feel energy and run but if you have excess weight well you would rather the body to utilize your reserve energy sources on your thighs and your hips and so you know eating sweets is like you know putting a little bit of gas in the system when in fact you already have a couple extra gas tanks on you so is sweet is counter indicated they knew this thousands of years ago so that would include sweet fruits like bananas dates coconuts and of course, all forms of white sugar are basically poison for all types. Um, so you'd want to avoid uh, sweets and uh, particularly these uh, uh, grains like biscuits. And even if they're organic or uh, natural or from a health food store, you know, you just have a muffin with some cane sugar in it and a grain. And so, you know, it's going to uh, give you a great energy source, um, but it's not going to help with uh, weight loss. In fact, it will probably be more energy than the body's able to use unless you go running, which uh, most of us won't. We're just going to eat that little muffin and uh, sit in the car and put on some weight with that. So it's like more energy than 
we actually need. I refrain from using the words excess calories and you know, restricting calories because it's really simplistic and I would say outdated way of looking at uh, weight loss is counting calories. I mean, one, it was hard to do and nobody ever did it right. And it's really not so much, you know, the calories, but more importantly is what food you eat. So if you uh, follow these guidelines, um, you could eat quite a bit and still be losing weight if you were having beans and, 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 and the cabbage and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and, and, uh, and uh, uh, some barley or buckwheat. Yeah, you could probably eat a couple meals a day and, you know, not snack and not eat at night. And you, you wouldn't gain weight even though you're eating. them. And the other uh, quality we want to uh, uh, avoid is a cold, cold, not cold. So no heavy, no salty, no sweet, and no cold. That means no cold drinks, no cold water. You know, uh, drinking cold water after the meals is a big cause of, of weight gain. And even Ayurveda says if you want to gain weight, you can drink some cold water after the meal and it kind of creates this type of undigested food in the body that uh, amar or type of metabolic toxins we could say that uh, ends up creating more weight particularly around the abdominal area so you got a lot of abdominal fat down here then this is probably more related to poor digestion we're going to cover these many many causes that we have of weight gain that's what i'm going to get to next is the different causes and that's what you really need to identify um, uh, so after, but you don't want cold, you want hot, hot teas, hot juices, um, hot soups, uh, ginger, cinnamon, things that are warm and stimulating that allows the, the, uh, cir good circulation. I mean, for example, uh, you look at cheese. I mean, if you had cheese and you wanted to dissolve it, because cheese is kind of heavy and gooey and kind of a little bit like fat tissue, uh, you could pour cold water on it all day and it's just, just going to get harder. Uh, but if you start pouring hot water on it, you can melt it off. So this is very important to have hot food. Sometimes people having a lot of smoothies and cold foods all the time actually are doing themselves more harm than good, particularly with the poor food combining we see with all the crazy things that we hear about to people throwing in smoothies, you know, fruits and vegetables, which poor, that's a very poor food combining right there, putting, you know, bananas and grapes along with your kale and uh, juice and why not throw in some hemp seeds, coconut oil, I heard it was good, throw in some cacao and some coconut, I heard it was good too, and then blend it all up and, you know, get a little gas and bloating, maybe some burping, but, you know, you've basically made almost an undigestible food for the body because it's really not able to digest these uh, complex food combining uh, combinations. So, you know, you have to be careful with your food combining, not mixing you know, fruits and vegetables together. One of the worst food combining combinations, which people do sometimes at night, even thinking it's healthy, is yogurt with fruit. I mean, that's that's a considered an Ayurveda based on thousands of years, a clear weight gainer. So if you're having a little tub of yogurt at night with your organic blueberries in it, it could be one of your main causes of weight gain. Besides, it contributes to edema too, having yogurt every night. So uh, particularly at night. In fact, Ayurveda says never even have yogurt at all at night. Even if you're a skinny little thing and you don't worry about weight, you should have it with the meal. It's a condiment. So often we're doing little things in a day uh, on a regular basis that we're not really aware of that are contributing to our weight gain. Because unfortunately, we only look at things through a nutritional perspective. And this type of nutritional perspective is, uh, is very limited. It's just only looking at the nutrients of the food. It's not really looking at how well you're digesting it. and that's why we have these crazy smoothies is because some we're looking at all the nutrients that are in it but we're actually at the end of the day we're unable to digest it um, and that's why we do things like blueberries and on our uh, uh, yogurt and things like this because we see well it's very nutritious or very organic or healthy but it's a food for food combined and creates uh, digestive problems digestive problems all lead to uh, uh, many health problems, but one, particularly for the kapha prakriti or body type, is uh, weight gain. So once again, no heavy, no uh, salty, no sweet, no cold, and uh, keep things uh, and and have more bitter, bitter foods. Bitter is like all oh, your greens, your leafy greens, your arugula is very bitter. You know, your green juices are much better with a little lemons. There are a few exceptions. You can put lemon. He can hang out with the uh, uh, vegetables, no problem, even though he's a fruit and actually can help you digest it. And, you know, salary apparently can hang out with the fruit. So there's a few guys that 
cross over there, but basically you want to keep them separate. But um, bitter is a good taste, which basically is your leafy greens. Um, and then astringent is very good for the, for the body. Um, and astringent is like uh, legumes, uh, in particular beans. So no heavy, no salty, no sweet, no cold. You want uh, light, you know, light foods like vegetables. You want not salty foods, uh, not uh, too sweet of fruits. Um, and you want hot and warm meals, not leftovers and cold. A lot of hot drinks like the ginger, the cinnamon tea is very good and um, hot foods. More bitter taste like in vegetables and more um, astringent, which is uh, like in beans. So basically, um, we could look at the, uh, the, the, the best foods as far as uh, fruit are, be apples, apricots, berries, cherries, cranberries, dried figs, lemons, mangoes, peaches, pears, persimmons, pomegranates, prunes, and uh, raisins. Particularly if you have a DMARS swelling, you can have some dry fruit like raisins. If you have, if you are very dry, skin is dry, stools are dry, then you'd want to avoid the dried fruits. And generally, you want to avoid these sweet and sometimes too sour fruits, um, such as uh, bananas, coconuts, uh, fresh figs, grapes, grape juices of course all juice you shouldn't have for uh, all types oranges uh, papaya a pineapple and plums are considered too sweet and not conducive um and uh, for vegetables you want to avoid the you want to have the pungent well i call them hot but we could say pungent and bitter vegetables like uh asparagus uh, uh beets broccoli brussels sprouts cabbage carrots cauliflower celery eggplant garlic leafy greens lettuce uh mushrooms okra onions, parsley, peas, uh, peppers, uh, radishes, uh, spinach, and sprouts. And try to avoid um, you know, sweet and juicy fruits, particularly cucumbers that have a lot of water, particularly if you have edema, heavy foods like sweet potatoes, and uh, zucchini and much of the squash family can be avoided. Uh, best grains are um, a barley, even basmati rice, uh, organic corn, millet, um, and rye. You know, often we've uh, heard people going on this... Uh, so-called uh, 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 grain-free or carb-free. It's kind of impossible to do carb-free, but even grain-free is kind of a too much of an extreme. It's really not uh, eliminating all carbs or eliminating all grains. It's which uh, grains. And of course, we know we mentioned earlier that a wheat is very heavy and very weight-gaining, so it's fine if you're skinny, thin thing and you you want to put on a little weight then you know have your wheat don't be scared of it um and oats we also know is a weight gainer so again if you're thin and lightheaded and vata and underweight you know, have your oatmeal just because you have a little extra weight on your thighs it doesn't mean that you're going to abandon oatmeal and just eat quinoa all the time because then you the rest of you could become too thin you could become more vata or anxious and that could imbalance you so but basically you want to avoid most rice is particularly white rice, wheat, and uh, oats. And most uh, um, uh, meat, you know, uh, you'd want to avoid like beef, lamb, pork, um, most seafood with the exception of shrimp, um, and definitely no fried or scrambled eggs. You know, maybe a little white chicken meat, white turkey, or even a rabbit or um, eggs that are not fried and a little shrimp, it'd be okay. Uh, for some people, but uh, other people will do better on a strictly a vegetarian diet. Now, most beans are really one of the best things for weight loss, and all are good except the kidney bean, uh, which is a little heavy, and the soybean, which we know slows down the metabolism and affects our thyroid gland. The mung bean is a little sweet, and the black lentils isn't suitable. All nuts really should be avoided, and so maybe you could have some seeds like sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds. Um, and that's a really good point. You know, uh, we often see nuts as a healthy thing. And this is, again, where nutrition kind of sends us astray and gets us confused or we read somewhere that nuts are very healthy. So we tend to eat them all the time. And this ruins our digestion and digestive fire. And then we put on more weight. So in most nuts are definitely heavy, hard to digest and not that suitable. And even if you're underweight and thin, it's not good to be snacking on nuts all day. Um, but to just use them in your cooking like the Chinese do, a little stir fry with some cashews or putting some almonds in your oatmeal would be fine for those who are underweight. But if you're overweight, particularly as a kapha property or body type, then you probably want to avoid all nuts and stick to some seeds with the meals, um, like pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds. And sweeteners, really, um, you know, honey is the only really suitable one. 
and all spices are good for circulation and digestion for and each person does a little different on different ones the only one exception would be salt which i mentioned and dairy products really need to be cut down to a minimum there's no reason again to go gluten-free i mean many people think i can't have dairy but you know they do fine on butter <laughs> butter doesn't bother too many people particularly ghee you know many people do have trouble digesting a milk and of course this is the milk in the store that's homogenized and pasteurized and and uh, it, it's very hard to digest because of this processing that's been done to it and goat milk is much lighter than cow milk easier to digest and less congestive i mean doesn't block up the respiratory system clog the nose so if you have a child and you know they're getting some congestion from the uh, dairy it's probably uh, being switching over to goat milk may solve the problem for the child so you don't have to restrict them and uh, you're getting away from the pasteurized and homogenized milk is going to help people and milk should never be done cold anyway it should always be warmed up and you know little spices in it will also help you do it so once again we just don't want to say oh milk's all bad it's all bad bother you know and particularly for children they they may enjoy it and may help their overall growth and they need a lot more protein than us adults who've done most of our growing most of us are actually getting too much protein and this is uh we now know as harmful to the body particularly the kidneys long term when it comes to uh oil um you know you these trans fats and uh, uh that we get in fried foods or processed foods and fast foods are really one of the main causes of weight gain probably one of the main reasons we put on weight from fast food is besides it's nutritionally very light and doesn't have much nutrients to it so it's going to create more cravings um, but these uh, trans fats and these are are uh, hydronated oils are are clogging up the system particularly the liver the gallbladder kind of, and that which adversely affects your ability to digest fat and definitely contributes to weight gain particularly around the belly area uh, so you want to have really good fat you want to always spend your your the 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 most you can or you can afford on the best oil uh sunflower oil is one of the best particularly if you have gallbladder problems you know in ayurveda coconut oil is not suitable for weight loss it's a heavy thick oil and uh, particularly in the winter time it's very dense and not suitable and anybody who's had a gallbladder problems knows that a teaspoon of coconut oil will pretty much level you out on the floor um, but you eat say a little avocado won't bother you a little um, maybe a little sunflower oil with your food won't bother you well coconut oil you'll definitely feel it in the gallbladder and if you have fatty liver uh, obesity and you don't want these heavy saturated fats despite their nutritional content so we kind of just went over there uh, some of the main guidelines for losing weight now I want to get to the real heart here and is help you to identify um, some of your causes and you know shoot up some questions here folks I'm looking over here looking for some questions here. Come, come, give me some love back come, talk to me here talk to me here I'm talking to a screen oh there we go thank you I see some highs there are, thanks shoot me some more highs so I'm going and keep me going keep me going I'm gonna have some tea here <laughs> so we're ready for part two now we're gonna identify the cause and this is really the first thing you want to do after identifying your body type is what is the cause of my weight gain as I said in the beginning I know some of you have come late to this uh, webinar that you it, oh, overweight isn't a disease even though it's now been classified as one it's a cause I mean it's an effect so we need to understand what is your cause So let's go over a few of these causes. The most common, number one, and as I've emphasized on other videos, and any Ayurvedic doctor or practitioner will tell you the same thing, is uh, poor digestion. Poor digestion coming from some of the things I mentioned, eating heavy, hard to digest foods, snacking in between meals on night, just snacking uh, on, on, on different uh, organic and healthy foods. It doesn't matter, this kind of grazing, having multiple little meals through the day. Now, if you're going to the gym, working out five or six hours a day, or maybe two shifts of three hours in the morning, or three hours in the afternoon, probably you could get away with eating four or five meals, small because of the amount of, of uh, calories you're burning off doing five, six hours in the gym. So I think that information came as kind of gym guidance to have three or four meals, four or five meals, small meals a day. But in fact, it is very unhealthy um, and uh, affects your digestion adversely because the digestive system is a process like many other 
processes in the body. It needs as a as a cycle that it has to go through. So it just can't keep grazing and eating all day. So poor eating habits, eating at night, poor food combining, which I talked about, eating at night, you know, uh, having fruit after meals, you know, having big bowls of yogurt, and skipping meals, and then eating a lot in the afternoon and eating all afternoon, eating in the car, eating while standing, eating well in a big hurry, not chewing your food, swallowing your food, you know, all of these type of habits that we often have in our fast paced world here where we're very interested in, not very interested in sitting down and having a nice meal and chewing it properly. Um, uh, and in a group environment, you know, like a family, this is, this is going to be much more healthy than our kind of eat as we go, eat at the desk, eat in the car type of mentality because we're not digesting very well. And many people can have different digestive problems for other reasons too. Like I mentioned earlier, just high stress in your life will adversely affect your digestion. But the main point is when the digestion is not strong, and you can tell your digestion is not strong because you're not that hungry. I mean, you're just like, oh, I could eat at 12 or one or two. So that means you have a digestive problem. That is your cause of your weight gain. And the, and the sign is that you don't have much appetite. Uh, even you have, say, breakfast, you're just not that hungry till dinner and then you're really hungry at dinner and then you're still hungry again at eight o'clock and then midnight again you're still hungry so that's you know finally the body uh, got the digestive capacity the enzymes the bile the acids going you know eight nine o'clock at night because it was so clogged and congested too much mucosa in the stomach cladaca kapha we call it was blocking your panchaka pitta as we call it this fire that allowed you that uh, made it so you just didn't have much hunger. So it's a very funny thing that, you know, when you don't have much hunger, you don't digest very well. It creates a type of metabolic toxins we call ama, and this ama starts circulating through the body and creates weight gain, gets stuck in different aspects of different parts of the body, the joints, and creates joint pain, gets in the muscles, creates stiffness in the muscles. Um, and it's, uh, and, and contributing greatly to, to weight gain, all because of digestive weakness, we could call. So you really want to improve your digestion first. How many things you can do? The most common is just have like a ginger and, and, uh, and uh, cinnamon tea. You know, you get ginger sticks with some cinnamon um, uh, or cinnamon and some ginger and make some tea. It's very effective. Uh, that, that, that will help a lot to stimulate your appetite. Even you can get the ginger and just chew on a little bit before the meal. In fact, in Ayurvedic home remedies, you just get the fresh ginger and slice it off, squeeze a little uh, 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 lemon on it because lemon is sour and lemon stimulates the appetite. And put a little pinch of salt on it if you don't have edema or swelling and then chew on this before the meal. And this really stimulates the appetite. And you said, okay, bring on the food. And then you're hungry and then you digest it better. So you know, many people think that, well, I'm not hung that hungry. Why am I gaining weight? Well, that's, you gave your own answer right there. Many of my patients, they say, you know, I'm following your diet. I'm doing the beans. I'm doing the barley. I'm doing a lot of vegetables. I mean, you know, big helpings of vegetables, a lot of hot teas, ginger between my meals, ginger with my food, ginger tea between my meals, you know, li hot lemon water in the morning, all of these things stimulate the appetite. And then they say, I think I'm eating more physically than I was before, and I'm losing weight quickly. Well, that's it. Now the digestion's good. Now the metabolism is better. And of course, by not having the snacking between the meal, your body actually has a chance um, to, to, uh, to burn the fat. You know, So when you, you just keep kind of feeding the body, I mean, it's not going to have a chance to burn off those reserves. So you need to avoid the snacking. So let's talk about a few other causes. Of course, not having whole foods um, and having just uh, having more processed foods, packaged foods, canned foods, frozen foods, you know, health, you know, uh, uh, even if it's from a health food store, you know, these are harder to digest, not as nutritionally sound. So you should stick to whole foods, you know, as I mentioned, those fruits, the vegetables and the things along those lines that uh, uh, are, are natural. They came from the tree, they came from the ground, they rot, they go bad and they're uh, easier to digest. And we cover snacking. So one of the other um, main causes of uh, weight gain, besides lack of physical activity, lack of walking, so um, and just getting up, going upstairs, or exercising, um, so is to, um, um, you know, is, is, is uh, you know, uh, 
it's a combination we know of the two we're overeating and snacking on one side and then the other side we're not exercising well we, we're well aware of this but at the same time just restricting your food down eating less and forcing yourself to exercise isn't necessarily uh, a, a cure or a healthy treatment for some people that could create more stress more anxiety and even contribute to more weight gain or it's a little too extreme so then you're eating and you're not happy with your eating so once you get off the wagon so to speak then you're going to overeat again so it's better to get the digestion good have your so many kapha types can just do two meals a day you don't even need three meals a day with little gaps between it but you're enjoying your food you're not restricting the your your food you're just having certain foods that are not going to gain weight and you're trying to be more active in between and when you're hungry you're like more likely to be active you know if you just had a whole meal you don't feel like you know walking around uh, exercising or vacuuming the whole house because you you're digesting now you need to rest but when you're a little hungry there's a little edge to you so if you say well i'm hungry and then you go walk around the block you'll walk faster because you're hungry or you're going to clean the house or something along those lines so you can use this hunger as kind of a motivator you have to be uh, comfortable with being hungry i mean it's not the end of the world you're not going to die many of us would live for months if we're overweight on a desert island with just water um, just burning off our body fat would be kind of weak and malnourished uh, but we'd still be alive if we have enough body fat to keep burning any thin underweight person would of course perish in in a matter of a month or two of starvation but if you have a lot of body fat you would live a few months so remembering that and seeing that you i assume you have extra body fat then you can say to yourself well i could live on a desert island for a month i definitely can make it to dinner six o'clock and you know that type of discipline is necessary so that little hunger that you have you gotta you just gotta live with it you know drink some have an apple i think i had an apple here just in case i get hungry apple is very good for you know a, a fruit is very good for satiating your appetite or having a little tea will will help you so that's another uh, issue besides thyroid condition this is a whole nother subject we're generally more curable with some nutritional therapy like kelp and you know ayurvedic herbs like kanchar gugulu work quite well improving thyroid function and that's uh, a, a, a subject on its own but i want to talk about blockages in the system this is probably one of the main reasons that we have uh, weight gain uh, besides poor digestion now poor digestion is actually leading to these blockages so it's really you got the poor eating habits the wrong food the bad combining the snacking eating at night creating the poor digestion then the poor digestion is creating the ama and the ama is creating these blockages in the system so what do i mean by blockages in the system well you've got lymphatic blockage things are swelling up you got the lymph nodes swelling up there's face swelling in the neck the face the arms and you know the ankles this type of dance a blockage um you know it's even a water blockage when you have a lot of water swelling and this type of edema is a type of a blockage constipation is a type of blockage and constipation in itself can contribute weight gain particularly on the lower half of the body um so and then the liver too you know when you've had too much fast food and uh, too much uh, uh in, in your past there and your youth you're having too much fast food or junk food or burgers or steaks and you know saturated fats and fried foods for many years you know then the liver becomes you know we call fatty or congested and its ability to function is lower so it becomes congested and blocked as well so that's why the detoxification which is so popular and so effective with uh weight loss is so important because you you really have to start there after digestion first fix the digestion right get that digestive fire going you don't want a lot of gas and farting and bloating after every meal it's not a sign of good digestion um, and no appetite's also not a sign of digestion feeling of uh, good digestion you don't want to feel heavy and lethargic after the meal that's also a sign of poor digestion so fix the digestion first then start cleaning out the body getting the colons going if you're not having a couple of good healthy bowel movements a day not just one not just one at the end of the day or you know but a couple of good ones there if you're having two meals a day then you should have like two bowel movements a day generally those bowel movements should be before the meal one early in the morning then you can have your breakfast and then another one in the afternoon then you can have your meal so it's out first then more in you know if you keep going in 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 and the out's not going out you're going to get built up and uh, this creates also a type of autotoxicity which again creates more um, or toxins in the body and leads more to more blockages 
in the system you know even respiratory system it gets clogged and you have uh, uh, mucus and congestion and breathing problems or we'd say prana prana value so throw where it's the breathing system gets blocked you're not getting the prana the life force <gasps> and you're <clears throat> got a lot of phlegm not breathing through the nose the noses aren't clear that's a type of congestion and that will affect your energy level because you don't feel like running and exercises when exercising when you don't breathing well so that can even put on weight gain so respiratory congestion uh block congestion in the stomach like too much mucus not enough appetite you know congestion in the colon constipation congestion in the liver congestion in the lymphatic system people who are very obese generally and have constipation are, are blockages we could say of the sultras or systems in all of these areas so these need to be cleaned out and there's really individual treatments that need to be done for each of these different types of uh, blockages, you know, colon cleansing herbs at night, liver herbs before meals to stimulate the liver. These are mostly bitters, um, you know, and then lymphatic massage. Great one for getting the lymphatic system going is a mustard oil. You can do hot mustard oil massage on the body to get things going, make it work a little better. Put some castor oil in that. So if you have this type of lymphatic blockage, you could get castor oil massage. I mean, straight castor oil is a little bit too much, but mix it with that mustard oil, makes it hot and massage it on your body. Skin brushing is also very good. So really the best is to do a skin brushing first, you know, towards the heart. You can go watch videos on this and then, and then do this hot oil massage, not with coconut oil. That's a cooling oil. You want a hot oil, like a, a mustard seed oil and massage again the body towards the heart get the system going and then you could even put some castor oil on the abdominal area and massage that yourself really good and even put a hot hot pad on top of that castor oil and this castor oil is very penetrating it will go in and even help to detox the liver uh, uh, liquefy the, the this fat cells in the body and then you put a hot pad on it and this will help in helping with uh, abdominal uh, uh, fat. So this is a, and the cat and also will help with just getting the whole lymph going. And for, um, you know, for liver, you know, there's just many, many good herbs here. You know, mostly in Western herbs, we use a dandelion root, milk, thistle root, burdock root, with some ginger, things like that. So liver tea, you know, can, is what I provide to clients helps a lot. So I would say 20, 30% of most people who are overweight, the problem is in the liver this fattiness in the liver. If the doctor says you have high cholesterol and fatty liver and you're overweight, so then, you know, the cause is in this poor liver function. Then you're going to have difficulty digesting fat and breaking it down into fatty acids. So then, you know, it starts to, becomes a type of ama, a type of, uh, of toxin that just builds up in the body and creates more uh, a weight gain. So, um, and then, you know, uh, just toxicity in general uh, can create weight gain. If you've been exposed to a lot of toxins in the military or you live next to a, a factory with a lot of pollution and you, your body has absorbed toxins, particularly heavy metals from some type of exposure, which I think we're all exposed to nowadays, then the body can end up storing these metals or these toxins in fat tissue as a defense mechanism. And this uh, fat then becomes very difficult to uh, get off because um uh you, it's 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 stored there for a purpose and you can tell if you have this type of toxins in your fat because it's very rubbery it's a rubbery type of of fat it feels hard and rubbery it's not bouncy fat you know bouncy fat is probably just had too much carbohydrates and cookies and biscuits and donuts and sweets you know you get a kind of more bouncy loose fat and if you have a lot of fat that's swelling around the ankles and this is a lot to do with edema if you have a lot of constipation and blockage this could be due to the constipation um, so you want to identify your uh, causes but toxins and particularly uh, heavy metal toxicity can be a cause even poor sleep can uh, be a cause even you know overstress you're overstressed it affects your digestive system and um, then you don't sleep well and then this creates a cycle of lethargic then you tend to in the day then you tend to take a lot of coffee and stimulants to kind of keep yourself going so you don't have the proper nutrients so when you have poor digestion or you're just taking coffee and stimulants as your way to get through the day then you're not getting nutrition 
and particularly if you're not digesting well, it's the same. It's not eating good. You're just not, the body's not getting the nutrients. And when the body doesn't get the nutrients, you'll know it because you'll be craving and looking for more food. Um, and then this takes a craving, you know, you're, you're eating, but you're, you're still hungry. So these cravings are a sign that you're not digesting very well or malabsorption, which we can read just by looking at your tongue and asking you a few questions. So this type of malabsorption, which is an effect of poor digestion, is another reason. So uh, I'm sure I could think of a few more uh, causes of weight gain, but I hope you try to identify yours. And mo it's probably not just one thing. It's probably lack of physical exercise, too much snacking at night, maybe stress. It's probably a combination of a two or three different factors uh, leading to your weight gain. But don't just think, okay, I'm going to push myself to exercise when you're fatigued or you've had adrenal fatigue, you're stressed out, that's only going to make it worse. Don't push yourself to skip meals when that could increase your anxiety, nervousness, and make your sleep worse. Uh, so you have to find the right balance for you. So everything really needs to be quite individualized. And of course, that's the work that I do. Um, oh, I just had a few things up here. Beans. Beans are really one of the best things you can have for weight loss. Black beans probably being the best. As far as grains, you know, I, I mentioned buckwheat, millet. Millet's very good for edema and water retention. And you can get these uh, uh, veggie burgers now that are made with uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, ve vegetables and, and grains. And even you can get cereals now. A lot of that's a good thing about the gluten free craze is we do have some foods that are good for uh, weight uh, gain. This is, you know, made from buckwheat, amaranth, you know, uh, also very good. This one's got uh, chia in it. So these are like breakfast cereals, and but they're, uh, they're not using the oats and the wheat, which we know creates weight. But you should put hot water on them, not have them cold, because remember, it's more than just nutrition. Uh, you want them cold, and, you know, different seeds can be useful. Let me talk about a few herbs. Oh, and, of course, if you have this low appetite, that apple cider vinegar is very good in the morning. Now, if you have acidity and burning, a strong appetite, you don't need to do the ask apple cider vinegar to make it worse. You may want to have something more uh, cooling, even like coconut water to cool down. But if you have no appetite and you feel you have a lot of mucus and congestion, then apple cider vinegar in the morning uh, before meals will help a lot. Cooking with spices helps a lot. I have this spice here for kapha using turmeric, coriander, ginger, fennel, a uh, little, little fennel, black pepper, and a little cayenne, very little salt, sea salt. And this is, you know, helps again with digestion, helps with metabolism. Another a great trick is, and I mentioned it before, is get uh, fenugreek seeds, soak them in water overnight and drink it at the water in the morning. Good for stabilizing blood sugar. We do the same thing for diabetics and good for weight loss. And, you know, a Garcinia uh, fruit, you know, I think that's what Dr. Oz uh, talked about and got in trouble for by uh, stating that was a great weight loss uh, substance um and it, because it wasn't scientifically proven he got thrown in front of congress but you know they knew about it thousands of years ago it's empirical knowledge you know i'm sure millions maybe billions of people have already done it so i don't really look for the science to catch up anymore it's a pretty much proven and garcinia is very tasty it's a little sour and it's known to help uh, uh weight loss and uh, and then uh Jaminia, Sylvester, was our gumar in the Indian herbs is one of the best for stabilizing blood sugar and taking care of cravings. And like I mentioned earlier, that ginger and uh, cinnamon is very useful. So when you throw them all together, then you can make like a tea, like I did here. And this tea has all of these same substances in it there. Um, Elethra, which gives you a little energy, so you wouldn't want to take it if you don't sleep. There's a little um, a green tea in here too, again, for the energy and the metabolism. And then you got the Garcinia. For the weight loss the jaminia for the blood sugar and chickweed which is a diuretic helps with water retention the fenugreek which stabilizes blood sugar and some ginger and stevia and stevia is very good for weight loss too so you know that type of weight loss tea is very effective in ayurveda there's different herbs i would say are more powerful when you actually start having um these powdered herbs the main one in ayurveda we have is a gugulu uh, but this particular one is a gugulu uh, Devdato, Chikrat, Chikrat, which is good for digestion, Haritaki for cleansing, and Amlaki, Bibitaki. These come from that Trifala formula, and a Moringa, which is now getting a little popular, and Kupti, which is for the liver. 
So, you know, this is for a cholesterol weight loss formula that's going to help to uh, get the bowels moving, cleanse you out, cleanse out the liver, and increase metabolism. And the Google has this scraping quality that gets right in there and scrapes uh, the, the fat away and helps you to lose weight. So if you're following the right diet, following the right eating habits, um, you know, maybe, and then you start taking these herbs, particularly these Ayurvedic herbs, you know, it can expedite the weight loss process two or three times um, and help to avoid having to spring back and gain the weight back again because they're actually doing something like cleansing out the liver, cleansing out the colon, improving liver function, uh, you know, improving the kidney function and water retention. So, you know, that's a really, it's an overall approach. There's no real quick cures. Individual diet, uh, the right food combining, the right foods for the person, and then the herbs are used as supportive to help to maintain blood sugar, include, uh, improve fat metabolism, and, uh, and, and, and give you like a tool to, to help you to lose weight. The herbs are like your, become your best friend. So I hope that uh, gave you some ideas. See if I have anything else around here that I could show you. No, I, I think I covered a lot. Got the mustard oil out, gastro oil there. All I only have left is my apple. So, uh, and that's another good cure is fasting. Fasting is a nice cure if you're a kapha, don't have much appetite, not hungry till three or four o'clock in the afternoon. Start doing intermediate fasting. Fast for three or four days first until you're really hungry in the morning and then continue to fast one day a week your entire life on uh, just a liquids, ginger, cinnamon, uh, tea with a little lemon in it. You do that for a day and this gets your appetite going. You know, if you're uh, a vata and you have a lot of anxiety, you can't fast. If you're a pitta and you have a really strong appetite, then it's fasting is going to be difficult for you. But maybe a fruit fast, maybe an apple fast you could do um, to kind of uh, kickstart your, your weight loss. Now, of course, uh, the best time for weight loss really is in the spring, not in the winter time. It's harder to lose weight. Uh, in the winter time, it's much easier. In the spring, that's the time we should shed the extra pounds along with the squirrels and the chipmunks. They kind of plump it up in the fall with the nuts and hold on to that fat during the winter. And they shed it off in the uh, spring, start eating more of the little sp uh, flowers and the, and the little sprouts that are more bitter and good for weight loss. So even the animals are going through a kind of a weight gain, weight loss process during the seasons. So we want to harmonize ourselves with a season and try to focus on not gaining too much weight in the wintertime and keeping it in check but not pushing it too much and then in the springtime really focus on cleansing detoxifying and then keep the diet light all summer long so you can lose the weight during the summer and then just fall and winter don't worry about it too much just kind of hang in there and not gain too much weight not eat too much of uh, uh, fatty heavy uh, uh, foods like i mentioned in the beginning so I hope that gave you some ideas, covered a lot, talked a little fast. It was almost an hour. So if you have any questions, you can always uh, add, a, add your comments to this video, and I'll be happy to uh, reply. If you like an uh, individual protocol and treatment and herbs tailored to your uh, needs and uh, your causes of your weight gain, then feel free to contact me. I'm happy to assess your health condition, determine the causes of your weight gain, and give you an appropriate individualized diet supported by uh, herbs that will help to address these causes and help you lose your weight once and for all uh, and not put it back on. Thank you very much, and uh, I wish you the best of health and happiness.